so much for joining us. It was yet another light week in the Missouri House of Representatives. With five weeks to go of legislative session, we have still yet to pass any bill to the governor's desk, which is just quite an interesting uh, situation to be in and a showcase that the Republican supermajority just cannot get along long enough to be able to do anything productive here. Um, I will say the House was able to perfect this week the Missouri Advanced Manufacturing Recruitment Act, which we were very excited about. It's a great bipartisan su su showing of support to President Biden's agenda to bring more jobs back to America and specifically to Missouri. So we were excited to see that bill finally moving. Um, we are still eagerly awaiting to see what the Senate's going to do around not only the state budget, but the federal reimbursement allowance, paying for our Medicaid program. Um, obviously, until the Medicaid uh, dollars are secured, we really have no idea what the state budget is going to look like. So uh, wait to see what they decide to do. But with that, we're happy to answer questions. Um, this week, we saw Senate Democrats sit down um, about 12 hours in the debate about the defund Planned Parenthood legislation. Your thoughts on that, um, is 12 hours long enough do you wish they would have made it more of a compromise? Talk, talk about your feelings about that. Well, the Republicans have been trying to take away funding for women's health care since long before I got in the legislature. This bill that the Senate uh, passed and will come back over here to the House um, is definitely not the first time we've seen this. Uh, this language has passed multiple times and, of course, has been struck down by our courts. Um, it's really wild to me that the, this very well may be the, very, the first bill that passes both bodies. And it's so interesting that the Republican majority is choosing yet another attack on women's reproductive health care in a time when we know citizens are going to take back that rights here this year. Um, in terms of the Senate Democrats, we love them and support them for all of the filibustering that they're able to accomplish. Those guys are the front line of defense for so many things we deeply care about, and so I can't thank them enough for all that they did. Uh, the Senate perfected and is likely to move the child marriage ban. Um, what are your thoughts on that and, and what support do you think will uh, be had in this chamber? Yeah, so um, again, along with attacks on women's reproductive health care, we've seen in, in the state of Missouri very unfortunate laws around things like marriage and, and how women are valued as citizens here. Um, as Representative Ashley Ani has a bill to try to make it so that women are allowed to get a divorce while pregnant. Um, and Missouri, so when I first got here, had ridiculous child marriage laws. Of course, we've made headway on that, but was very grateful to see the Senate actually talk about the fact that children should not be married and it not get filibustered all into the night. Um, what I would say to this whole situation, I'm very grateful to everyone who has spoken up about this over the last few years. We have made that a huge priority to draw attention to the fact that Missouri is such a draconian state when it comes to our laws around children and particularly women. Um, so grateful to see that bipartisan bill moving through the process and hopefully we can have that conversation on the House side. So I was just going to ask you, um, Representative, hold on, just one off that. Representative Ani, I was going to ask you, are you planning on amending that to add your bill to the marriage bill? There are a few paths that I'm looking at to get my language across the finish line this year. Um, that's absolutely one of them. Um, I'm actually working on the legislation I, or, or the initiative, honestly, in two parts. One, I'm working with the Supreme Court to kind of revise um, some of their practices, and I'm also um, working to revise the language that I filed so we can make the fix statutorily as well. So um, that's one vehicle. I see a few others potentially. So I'm, I'm really hopeful that we can get this done this year. The Ethics Committee has been meeting this week and is going to be meeting again in a few minutes if they haven't already started. Clearly they are working on a report um, that will be <laughs> the House. What is the impact of the House on a negative report about the Speaker? What is the, what is the What does it do in the final weeks of the session? You know, it, uh, you all have heard me say this before, but having an ethics investigation and the highest ranked uh, representative in this body has impeded progress. Absolutely. I think that's part of why we are sitting in the situation today without a single bill passed. Um, we are, just like you all, eagerly awaiting to see what this report looks like. Um, we are not privy to anything that's been going on within there outside of what you all are reporting to us. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. Of course, if the, we, as always, uh, will respect the work of the Ethics Committee, and if they choose to go in that direction and have the evidence to, to uh, penalize the speaker, of course, we'll be looking at that. And if they say that there was nothing there, then you know, we will listen to the folks who have done the work countless hours, day after day, uh, to investigate this, and I'm grateful that they've been doing so. Well, Representative Brown, do you the house, if the House is pushed to vote on some 
form of, of reprimand and any and it, what does it do to the to the flow of legislation? Does it actually help Democrats stop some things you don't want? Well, I would say the flow of legislation in, uh, this year is not happening anyway. <laughs> so, um, you know, I'm not sure how it would impact what happens here. Obviously, we always have a Senate versus House in the final weeks, a showdown between the Republican supermajorities who can't get along. Um, so I'm sure that that will give some upper hand to the Senate, most likely. Uh, but that's not anything we haven't already seen before, right? So it'll, you know, it all depends on what the report says, what that reprimand may or may not be. And then, of course, what the body chooses to do, because the body doesn't necessarily have to follow it. It will come to a vote of everyone here, and it'll be interesting to see how this all plays out. Representative Brown, having recused yourself from that committee, do you want to, I don't know if you want to speak to its work or just echo? No, anything? I'll just remain quiet. I'm going to just remain quiet and let the committee do their work. Uh, I, I do trust what goes on in the room because I, I've been through the process, I understand the process. And so we'll just wait and see what the committee comes up with. And I do trust whatever the committee will find out and put in the report. Uh, this question is for you, and then uh, I'd like the two Kansas City area reps to weigh in as well. Um, what are your thoughts on the, the bill that offers the, the tax exemptions for this Kansas City nuclear facility? Yeah, so I think it's always important that as a legislature we're looking at ways to um, to get manufacturers and folks to come here and also keep businesses that employ lots of folks, whether that is a facility like this, whether it's our, our sports stadiums or whatever the conversation may be. We need to be looking at what makes Missouri most attractive. And so um, I'm always open to having these conversations around incentives um, that as long as they're keeping jobs and that we're holding those folks who receive that money accountable as well. Um, but I, since it's locally impacts them, I'll, I'll defer to them. Well, I, I think it's great for Kansas City because you look at the area in which this development is going in in South Kansas City. Uh, there, there's the opportunity for economic development there. These are good paying jobs that are being brought uh, into this facility. So I'm in favor of doing whatever we can to, to help Missouri grow and to help grow our economy. I would just echo what was said. I think it's a fantastic opportunity for Kansas City if we can provide economic incentives that make sense economically for not only our community, but our state. And I think this is an opportunity, yeah, to get good paying jobs into the region. And I'm always for that. I want to ask a question about a bill passed a couple of weeks ago. It, it's in regards to Representative Coleman's tax legislation. And what it would do is it only allows property taxes to go up 2% a year instead of just letting the assessor go however high. I've heard from some viewers that have said that their property taxes have gone up 30, 40, 50, 60 percent in the past year. Is Talk about how important that legislation is, if you supported it, and why you think we need something like that. Yeah, I, I appreciate the conversation in this body about um, managing what property tax assessments are versus on the other side of the building where they're saying let's just completely get rid of property taxes uh, because we absolutely need those dollars to function. Um, what I will say is absolutely we all have heard from hundreds of Missourians who have, um, have complaints about the uh, dramatic increases in what those property taxes are, particularly in the Kansas City region. Um, and so yeah, I think having a conversation around a manageable expectation for citizens is, is important. Folks deserve to know what their growth is going to look like in that realm and not be surprised last minute with this huge increase that they owe. Um, it's not manageable, and especially right now, I know folks are struggling day to day And when you have a surprise tax bill. That's just not the way that this should be done. Um, I would also add to, I know there are other conversations around what, how, how these taxes are paid and when. I, I know there's been bills in the past about breaking payments up, changing them to different times of the year. Um, what I appreciate about this bill as well is it's allowing for discussion in that realm of how can we actually help Missourians um, when it comes to managing what these taxes look like. The reason we reassess every two years was a Missouri Supreme Court decision around 1980 that says that uh, that because there was reassessment wasn't occurring, and so when you bought a house, your house would get revalued, and it, and there was no rhyme or reason for that. Um, it sounds like this kind of bill could put us in a position where the assessed values are out of whack to the actual market values of the properties. How do you keep the taxes appropriate and link to those market values and then cap how they are, how the assessments are made? Um, do people 
if, if someone buys a house, does that take the, two, the, the cap away on the, on the reassessments? You know, I, this conversation is, is a very robust one that I wish we would spend more than just a couple of weeks talking about here in this body, quite honestly. It seems as though folks are either like, let's completely get rid of it, or we just have these short band-aid fixes. And I think to your point, that this really is a robust discussion that needs to be evaluated of are we doing this appropriately with the current structures that we have in place right now. Um, I think it is absolutely, you know, it makes sense to me that we are having assessments regularly because the market is fluctuating so much. Um, of course, I think that we should be looking at ways to better tie those together so that citizens, again, are not um, being surprised by some of these changes. Um, so, you know, hopefully this is a, a step in, the, like a first step in this bigger discussion of what we really need to be doing as a state. Even uh, d despite both parties filing a version to a, uh, of a bill to eliminate the tax on groceries, uh, I, it doesn't appear that that is getting much movement or momentum. What Can you address that? Yeah, um, I will say first, I'm, I'm grateful to see members of both parties finally having this conversation around taxes on things that impact every single Missourian every day, all the time. Uh, we too often in this building talk about tax breaks for corporations and folks who have all of the money in our state when everyday citizens are really are struggling. Um, so the Democrats have been filing uh, for various versions of getting rid of the food tax uh, for several, several years. So again, grateful to see that Republicans are jumping on board with this conversation. You know, we look at our neighbors next door in Kansas and Governor Kelly was able to get this accomplished and citizens have really, really appreciated having that opportunity. In terms of why they're not moving, of course you'd have to ask the speaker why he's choosing not to make regular folks a priority, but yet the corporate tax lowering was one of the number one things he wanted to get done here um, when we're already one of the lowest corporate tax rates in the entire country. So. Ready to take away 25% or more of local government sales taxes? Yeah, and so each bill that has been filed is very different on that. Um, I can tell you the bill that I filed actually creates a mechanism and a whole new fund within the legislature where we can appropriate money through there and get it sent back down to the locals. Um, my bill also has some increases on taxes, like, or actually taxing things like yachts and private planes, which we do not do in the state of Missouri. Um, again, I think this conversation should be, it is really a bigger picture about. Who are we taxing and why? And when everyday Missourians are struggling to buy things like groceries or diapers for their kids and taxing is a part of that, but yet we're allowing folks with private yachts in the state of Missouri to not pay taxes is completely ludicrous to me. And so I think that there are lots of ways to get that money back down to the municipalities to hold them solvent. Okay. Thank you guys so much. Thank you.